Hi everyone, in this short video, let's discuss when and when not to do surgery in patients with prolactinoma. Well, I don't know whether you know that prolactinomas revolutionized tumor therapy when it was discovered that dopamine agonist therapy could actually not just control prolactin, but also shrink the tumor. So this was one of the first tumors, whether it was benign or malignant, to be have been able to be treated medically. So the topic is a strange one in the sense we are asking uh, who are the people in whom you would not do this first line therapy of dopaminergic agent therapy, but do other options like surgery or radiotherapy. So if you look at the dopamine receptor family, most of them, D2, D3, D4, D5, etc., are present in the lactotroph adenomas or prolactinomas. And when dopamine therapy is given, the D2 receptor family, which is a G protein coupled protein, quickly brings about a reduction in the prolactin secretion by gene transcription blockade. Not just that, but over time, over, over hours and days, you will see that the gene proliferation as well as cell differentiation within the prolactin producing tumors begin to go down. And this brings about in cell proliferation going down means the tumor size decreases. And this is why dopamine agonist therapy particularly the agent of choice nowadays is cabergoline, except in pregnancy when bromocryptine is used. These dopamine agonist therapies have the ability not just to control prolactin levels and thereby decrease the hypogonadism that results from the hyperprolactinemia, but also have the ability through gene mechanisms and by decreasing the cell proliferation in shrinking tumors. So whatever size of the tumor, we can shrink it. That is the current concept in endocrinology. So for most patients, currently, this cabergolin therapy is the first line agent. When would you not use medical therapy, but would use surgery? Well, that's an interesting question nowadays because the dopamine agonist therapy has such a safety and uh, effectiveness record. Well, if you have a patient presenting with apoplexy, for example, there is no question, most of the time, you would resort to surgery. Also, if you have a patient who has big tumor effect, in other words, chiasmal compression, which we worry about, and most of this chiasmal compression is caused by a cystic lesion, then we would opt for primary surgery without even trying dopamine agonist therapy. So these, in my mind, are the two key indications for primary surgery in patients. In most of the other patients, we would initially start, even with optic nerve compression, you could start under supervision, the dopamine agonist therapy, and monitor visual fields, and also the scans and the prolactin levels to see whether this tumor is responding. So if in patients with compression, the tumor is not shrinking and the eyes are not opening up and the prolactin is not going down, in other words, the tumor is resistant to therapy, then surgery would be undertaken pretty quickly. So this would be an emergency, particularly when there is chiasmal compression. And if the tumor doesn't start shrinking, you would do that. There are circumstances when the tumor is responding, but you need to do surgery. What are those? In some patients, as this big tumor begins to shrink and as it begins to lift away from the floor of the cella, you might unearth a CSF leak because this tumor was plugging and had eroded, this tumor is plugging an eroded surface of the cella. And now it, as it begins to shrink, you might get CSF leak. So this is a rare indication where the tumor, the treatment is so effective and the tumor is shrinking, yet sadly you have to go in and unpack this tumor and also block the CSF leak to avoid CSF infection and to stop the CSF rhinorrhea. 
There are instances where patients do not tolerate therapy. In that instance, also, you might need to do that. Sometimes in patients who need to go for pregnancy pretty quickly and the tumor is only responding slowly, you might undertake that. But usually, most patients respond to medical therapy and surgery is not usually required. When there is true resistance to dopamine therapy, you have two options, either stereotactic radiotherapy or conventional radiotherapy or surgery. So this has to be discussed with patients and chosen. So ladies and gentlemen, just to go back to summarize what we've discussed, medical therapy is the first line therapy for most of the patients with prolactinoma because they are so effective. But in patients who have primary indications for surgery, would be those who present with apoplexy or, or are deemed to have a cystic lesion that is too risky to leave alone because cystic areas don't shrink, particularly with medical therapy and have chiasmal compression. You might do surgery after a trial of therapy if the tumor fails to shrink adequately to relieve compression of the chiasm. There are patients who are resistant to dopamine agonist therapy both initially and, and secondary resistant after some time when the prolactin levels start going up and the tumor begins to grow. So these are secondary indications. After tumor has been treated, if they have CSF leak, you might go back to do surgery in these patients. Radiotherapy is always another option for patients in whom there is resistance and the tumor is not compressing chiasm and there is a nice little lesion that can be targeted with radiotherapy, we will go for radiotherapy rather than surgery. But whenever this tumor is large enough to cause chiasmal compression, sadly, radiotherapy cannot be used as the primary modality. So I think that summarizes the effectiveness of dopamine therapy and where it would fail and where you would rather choose surgery or radiotherapy. Thank you. <music>